right, let's talk about Google Images and searching. So I'm at images.google.com and I just want to go through how we can vary the search results that we get when we're searching Google. So for instance, we used to do a project in my Photoshop class where people had to create a picture and it was created from food. Everything on the picture had to be food. So sometimes people would struggle because they needed to make something that was red and they needed red food. So they would type in red food. And then they would get all this kind of stuff. And that's fine. And that works to some extent. But an easier way was to actually type in food or fruit or vegetable or meat and then tell it on here, you know, give me things that have mostly red in the picture. So I might say vegetable. And then I can go into tools on images, go to color and pick red. And then oh, I picked pink. Well, look at me, I can't see my colors. <laughs> pick red and then it tries to give you pictures that the dominant part of the image is in red. And then you're going to get different types of images. So could you still do the first way? Sure. But you can also do this, and that's going to help you come up with some different results. Now, there's not a ton of red vegetables, but I could type in fruit and leave it set on red. And then I'm going to get a different set of images. Or I could type in meat, which I'm going to get a bunch of steak, hopefully. <laughs> and then that's going to be in there and so forth. And so setting our colors of the image to red is one way to change the types of results that we get. But let's look at some of the rest of these settings. Again, I'm going to click on tools. One of those is size. So most of the time in Photoshop class, we want large images. So when I set this on large, I'm going to get completely different results than if I have it set on all images. Or if you're just looking for little images, you might want to set it on medium images or some other size. I'll set it back to any. Again, you have to hit tools to show this bottom box. Usage rights. So if you were going to be doing something that you were going to use in a publication or you're going to use to post online or something like that, you need to be very careful to make sure that you have the proper license for that use. That's what this is for. So you can set it where you're allowed to reuse the image and that's going to give you completely different results too. Now for most of our stuff in class, since we're posting it just in our area, that's going to be okay, but just understand if you are doing a project, you do need to be paying attention if it's going to be done for outside of school purposes. Um, so you can set that to filter by license. You can also set the type. So if I'm looking for clip art meat that's red, then here we go. So that's helpful. Or I don't know, can I say if I'm looking for Donald Trump, orange, red, whatever. But anyway, you can see we get our little clip art pictures here. So there's lots of different things that you can do there. Line drawing. Now line drawing, we're not going to be doing colors because line drawings are going to be line drawings, which are usually black and white. Kind of helpful for using if you want to do like a coloring book or um, some sort of a graphic where you want to go in and put the colors in yourself. So line drawing is in there. Or if you're looking for GIFs, which oftentimes are animated, but not necessarily, you can set it on GIF. And in the corner of these, when it says that, that usually means that it's actually animated. When you click on it, Usually it animates. Now, a lot of times at school, um, animations are blocked because a lot of the websites that provide animations are blocked. So um, sometimes if you click on it and it just stays stuck, that just means it's blocked and you can't get to it. But that's what that little GIF in the corner usually means, that you have an animation, you can see here, um, and so forth. So that's how we can change those formats. But notice we talked about a bunch of other file formats and none of them are listed here. So I'm gonna show you how we can work around that too. And then time. We can say, well, okay, there's those pictures of Trump are from forever ago. I want some that were uploaded in the past 24 hours. So you can go in here and this tells you three hours ago this picture hit the internet, right? So anyway, so these are some good tools to know that, and to vary your results because sometimes you're just not getting what you need and you want to get some different results. Now we can hit clear here to set it back to just the defaults where we're not telling it anything in particular. All right, let's do some final little things here. Some of my favorite things to do are using these special little keywords that you can put in here and you use them with a colon after them, okay? So if I want pictures of Trump that are a certain size, I'm gonna use this, the word image size, all one word, all together, and then a colon. And then you're gonna put in the dimensions, that's the size in pixels with an X between it. 
So if I'm looking for a common image size is 640 by 480. So I'm going to type that in, 640x480, and hit Enter. And these pictures are all going to be that size. So if I click on this, this is from one day ago, this should be a 640 by 480 picture. Okay, so that's how that works. And sometimes it's good to open those images up. So once you get the preview, either click it again or right click the preview and open the link in a new tab. Oh, I'm sorry, open an image in a new tab. And when you do that, you're going to actually see the size of the picture that you're looking for. Um, if I wanted a square, I could say, okay, let's do 500 by 500. And then I'm only going to get square images. So if you know that you need a specific size, you can do that as well. Again, right click, open the image in a new tab if you want to actually see that it's that exact size. Because the preview over on the side, you can't really tell the size of it. But you can when you open it in a new tab. So especially when you're looking for really big images. You know, if I want a 2,000 by 2,000, I don't know if there's even going to be any of those. Well, there we go. It says there are. So let's find out. And you can see in the corner it says it is. But I can right click and open the image in a new tab. And this is bigger. Actually, now I have a magnifying glass on here. See that? That's how big this image is. So this is a really big image. Okay. So I just, that's a good, a good tip, especially when you're at school and you're behind the school firewall. Sometimes it says that you're getting the picture, but then you go here and you try to open it in a new tab and the picture's not there because the school firewall isn't letting you get to the actual picture. That happens a lot with certain movie stars and stuff like that. Okay, so that's image size. Be sure you have that written down because that's an important one. Again, it also gives you completely different results, right? Because these are all pictures that are different sizes. So to me, that's like super, super handy as well. Okay, the last one I want is to show you file type. So it's just like image size, but file type. And we talked about file types in our last lesson. So file type here, now I can type in those specific file formats. So PNG images oftentimes have transparent backgrounds. Now, not always. But if I'm looking for an image that has transparent background, which is handy in Photoshop because then I don't have to cut it off the background, then I can put file type colon PNG. These images will be PNG files. Now, these are not, because this is a person, these are not going to give me pictures with transparency, but these would be PNG images. And so, again, if I click it, or I right-click it, open it in a new tab, this is PNG. And it even says so right here. You can see the little PNG part here. So if I right-click now and save this image, it should be saving in PNG format. And then I can type in whatever name I want for it. Okay? So that's the way to do that. Now, if you're looking for something like a building... Say I say building and it's a PNG, then I can go to color and say transparent. So now I'm in transparent and I'm getting PNG files. So if I click here for the Marquette building, you can see this shows that checkerboard. Um, and if I right click and open this in a new tab, there it is. And that's a clear background. By the way, sometimes a lot of those websites that provide free pictures, they preview like this right here. See how it shows the checkerboard? that checkerboard's going to be there. And you can tell, because when you click on those and you open them in a new tab, they have the checkerboard. See that? Did you also see how that picture said it was going to be a big picture, but then when I right-clicked it, it ended up being tiny? That's because the firewall is blocking this website. So see how it looks bigger here? But when I opened it, it actually is this little bitty image. So, so that you're not disappointed <laughs> after you download stuff and then you want to go use them in Photoshop, I really strongly suggest opening in a new tab just so you can make sure that the picture you're saving is actually the picture you want. So give it a click. When it opens in the side pane, open the image in a new tab. If it's tiny, that means it's probably blocked. If it's fine and you see that the checkerboard is gone, then I know, listen, I can put this in here right on top of another picture like a sky and that sky is going to show through in the background because there is no background and I know it because it's a PNG, but if it was a JPG, I couldn't make that assumption, okay? Um, so anyway, so that transparent is handy, and setting the file type to PNG is handy as well. Or sometimes, um, you know, you can go through here once you've set that and choose different file formats. Okay, you can also search by image. So let me go back to Google, and then make sure that I'm back in images, and I like to go to images, to got do, got do, go, <laughs> I can't say it, dot google dot com. Um, if you have a picture, let's say you saved a picture and you forgot where you got it. That happens sometimes, right? Especially in a class where you're supposed to give credit. 
Um, you can take the picture and just drag it into Google Images. So I'm just going to drag this picture here in here. It uploads it. And then it says right here, it found the image. And then I can click right on it and it's going to say, oh, this image is on a ton of websites. Look at all these websites, the same images. I'd love to know if they had permission to put that on all those. Um, I had a photography project once in class and I had the kids have to take pictures. And then I had this person who took this really cute ballet picture and he said he took it himself. That was his sister. I didn't believe him because it was a really great picture. So I dropped it in. Yeah, it was all over the internet. So clearly not his picture. It had been from way more than this past week. Um, so kind of busted, got a zero on the project. Um, but anyway, so you can see this is how you can get to those. And sometimes if a picture is blocked, but you can get that teeny baby version of it, you can drag the teeny baby version in here and try to find others. And so I can go to all sizes or I could say, listen, I found a baby one. I need a large picture of that same picture. And if this is all over the place, maybe there'll be some. And so here, if I come in, here's a pretty good size image. Let's open it in a tab and see. Yeah, I even have a magnifying glass. So that's a pretty good size image there if I needed that image. Okay, and so that's that's the reverse image lookup, and I think that that's pretty handy as well. So hopefully you have picked up a few tips. Um, you can get to some of this by going into um, advanced search. Um, so if you go to advanced search, you do have some things. You can tell that comic is called the Onomatopoeia comic, um, but you can change your search terms. You can choose the size, and they give you some choices in here. Um, you can choose whether they're square or tall or wide in here. You can choose those colors or transparency in, in here. But they don't let you choose the file type all the time. Now down here lower, they've added this in actually. This was gone. Um, but you can come up here so I could say I want animated. Obviously, I would need a GIF if it's animated. Um, you could say I only want pictures that are from Australia. <laughs> I'm going to type kangaroo. Isn't that where Australia's are? are where kangaroos are from, Australia. So I'll say from Australia, I want an animated kangaroo that came from Australia, from a website in Australia. Then I can try to search here, and then there we go. Got me a kangaroo on the beach that was uploaded in Australia. So how about that? Fun stuff, right? All right, so again, that's the advanced image search. Again, you go to settings and advanced search to get to that. So um, either learn a couple of keywords, use your little tools, or hit that advanced search settings, and that will really expand your capabilities for finding the images that you want to use in Photoshop.